More questions, guys? Trolling speed? <laughs> I love that question. That's my favorite question. Here's, here's how I troll. If you got trolling with me, you're going to think I had a fifth of whiskey before we went in the boat. Okay? Trolling speed for me could be the motor's disengaged to three and a half miles an hour. Okay? I, I love it when I read the articles and they say, yeah, we were, you had to be at 1.2 miles an hour. Okay? I'm here to tell you guys that nothing in nature swims at 1.2 miles an hour for 15 hours straight. It doesn't happen. All right? I've got the rod in my hand. I'm working it. I'm accelerating the boat up or down. I'm constantly changing speed. Something to trigger that strike. They'll get behind that thing and it'll just, they'll swim with it. Until something changes. Okay? General speed to try to keep it is, you know, a mile an hour to two miles an hour. If you want to keep it in that range, fine. But pump the rod occasionally. Pull the rod forward really fast and then let the rod sweep back so it stalls the bait. So that as they're running at it, you accelerate it away so they accelerate and then you stall it back and they run right into it. Don't just pull it along. Don't throw it in a rod holder and just let it go. That's why planer boards work so well. You get the planer board out there and the planer board is set up right when you're pulling it, it's doing some stuff. It's surging, it's moving forward and stalling and going back. It's imparting action back to your product. At nighttime, if you can, an electric motor is best to troll with. Okay? If you're going to use your big kicker motor, planer boards are nice. Just get it out to the side 20, 30 feet. You don't have to go way out. Put a glow stick on your board and send it out. Just get it out away from the boat. Okay? But don't ever just get it right at that speed. Trust me, it doesn't matter. You want it to be moving up and down. Okay? In February and March, we're 36 to 38 degrees. In the middle of February right now, February 16th, it's on my calendar. Nobody call me, nobody bug me, nobody email me because I'm not going to be around. That week is when I go down walleye fishing. Two things that are happening, guys. Fishing is not always triggered by water temperature, although it does help. But when you get off of work at 5 o'clock and you look outside, what's happening? Starting to be light out, right? Okay. So we start to get excited about that, right? Oh, gosh, it's light when I get home now. That's great. Well, fish are the same way. Don't overthink fish. Think fish is like humans, okay? It's starting to get lighter longer. That transition's starting to happen. They're starting to get excited. The reproductivity of it, the spawning, all that stuff's starting to get, okay. Well, now what's happening? You're starting to see temperatures in what? The 40s, 43? Okay, it's starting to warm up. When you start seeing those days when it's doing that, that's another key. So you've got the light being longer, the air temperature's coming up. The other thing that happens in Roosevelt, which really gets them moving, is they just started doing it. Water starts dropping a foot or two a day. They feel that water start moving against them. It starts to pull them out of those deep spots where they've been at all winter, and it starts moving them towards their spawning grounds. Okay? 36 to 38 degrees. You go down there and, and huck blades and drag gobies and stuff with me down there, guys. I sit on the same spot for 10 or 12 hours. I don't move. And the thing you got to remember in the wintertime, this is smallmouth bass, pike, whatever. If this is whatever, casino flats or whatever, this is that break right here. Those fish start out in the morning deep. They work their way up in the daytime. Now, I just got done telling you at the beginning of this while I had really light sensitive eyes, correct? Here's the one time where I'm a liar. In the dead of winter, in the middle of February, we catch our biggest fish between 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock. Last year, and we had three trips down there, our three biggest were 11, 14, and 16 pounds. Okay? 11 to 1 o'clock. The a.m. Well, a.m. to p.m. 11 in the morning till 1 in the afternoon. Those three biggest fish between 11 to 1 and in 11 to 12 feet of water, okay? Clear water, bright skies, goes against everything that you're told. Reason being is that two or three tenths of a degree warmer water on that fish, that female, allows her to go out and actively feed. So what they're doing is they're pushing up on this shallow area right in the middle of the day when the sun's the warmest. And when you're out there fishing going, whoo, you're starting to peel layers off, guess what? They're moving up there to do the same thing you are to get warm. Now you're fishing up here shallow. And in that window, you'll catch them big females. As the evening time comes around, 
You start fishing them back to where they're going to spend the night at, which is down here. Guys, we were down there for five days. I saw two, two fish caught, other than my party, my group of guys. Everybody comes in, drops the electric motor, puts down the bottom walker with a spinner, trolls that 30-foot contour, which is this right here, makes one pass, there's nothing here, and they leave. 17 boats or something like that, we watched do that. In that five days, and nobody caught anything. They pull that contour, and they're out of there. You have to move around with them. You have to fish them active with a blade. You've got to slow down and drag gobies, jigs, whatever. And just move with them. And understand, when you think it's nice and warm out, they do too. It's as simple as that. They want to get warm just like we do. So they pull up their shallow to do it. Outhouse Flats, which is up around the corner. They do the same thing. You guys know where that's at? Up around the corner of the outhouse that sits up there by the marker buoy. Same thing. It's the tip of a triangle. There's deep water coming up onto that flat. Right at the front of that, they hang out right there. Push up on that feed and go back down. Same principle. Come up in the afternoon to get warm. Okay. Then all you do is as spring progresses, you just follow them from, from outhouse flats. You'll start there. And then as it starts to warm up and get a little later, you know, maybe the end of February, you're at casino flats. Uh, then you move up from there. You go to the island. Then you go to the A-frame. Then you go to the cemetery. Then you go from there up to Blue Creek. Then from there you go at the end of March. You're up there at marker five in the current. You're just tracking them on their way up because they're traveling across all those spots because those are the feeding spots. Okay. Any other questions, guys? The water's dropping now. Yeah, it just started drop. Right, and moving faster. So how are you doing that? What's that? Well, what we're doing is just like, like a casino flats. Okay. All I do is I get there in the morning and I do two things. This, I park my boat out in about 40 feet of water. I don't do anything vertical unless I'm drop shot in a lake trout. Everything I do is casting. I want to cover water. So I'll park my boat out here in maybe 40 feet of water on the front end of this, which is off the tip of the point, and I'm casting everything up into here, and what I'm doing is bouncing my blade bait back until I hit them. Now, if I'm hitting my fish, and I'm hitting them all right at the back end of my bounce, what I'll do is pull up on here, which is telling me they're still out here really deep. I'll put my boat up here and say 25 feet of water, and I'll hook this way. Now I let it sink all the way down to the bottom in 40, 50 feet of water, and I start ripping it up the drop. Now I'm keeping my bait in the strike zone longer by doing that than I am by throwing this way and trying to bounce down the ledge. Then as the daytime progresses, and if you have a graph, believe in it. I believe in mine. I'll tell you, I can tell you what's going on underneath it. I mean, I believe it like it's the Bible. It's there. It's what I'm seeing. I'll see those fish start moving. These fish out here, I may have marked, and now they're gone, and I'll just slide in, and all of a sudden, I'll start marking them again. Because they're making their way up to get on top of this thing to get warm and to feed on the perch and whatever else they can get up here. So middle of the day, I'm up, my boat's in 12 feet of water casting that big flat. As soon as that starts to slow down, I don't quit and go, oh, they quit biting. I just turn around and I start casting back out, following them back down the slope as they make their way home. You should never say they just quit biting. And granted, guys, I'm not telling you that I don't go out and get skunked. I probably get skunked more than most, okay, because I'm out there more than most. But I can tell you, on those days when I'm getting skunked, I'm doing everything I can to catch something. And on the days when the fishing is good, it stays good for me all day long because I make the progressions to stay on top of the fish. That's what it's about. They're moving all throughout the day. There's never, ever, I don't care what, there's not a magic lure or a magic bait or nothing. I want you guys to do something when you talk to your buddies and your buddy says, man, we were catching them great. Everybody that says that comes up to me and says, Seth, what are they biting on? What are they biting on? Well, I got 144 boxes in my boat. You want to see? My dash has got you know, $2,000 of stuff that I took on and off all day long while I was trying to figure it out. The question you want to ask, and it'll blow your friends away, who cares what they're biting? Okay, how deep were you fishing? What was the water temperature? What were your conditions? What was the water clarity? Those are the questions you want to ask, okay? Because if you can get on top of the fish, and I don't care if it's a crappie or a walleye or what, if you can get on top of those fish, they're going to eat several things. They're not just going to eat this one bait. 
Okay, everybody focuses on this was the bait. BS, what was the rest of the story? I got enough baits, I'll figure it out. Tell me what you were doing. Were you casting from shallow to deep? Did you fish shallow when the sun came up and was beaming down? What were you doing? That's what you want to know. Don't ask the bait. And nine times out of ten, you know what they'll tell you? They, they, look, guys love that. Even if it's somebody you don't know, you know, or, you know, I don't care about what you were using. And they think, Pfft. so they just go off about all this stuff that they were doing because they think, oh, I'm not telling him what I was using. He's never going to catch them. Wrong. Wrong. You can get the info out of them just like that. Now, you don't got to tell me what you're using. I know that's your secret. What were the conditions like? You know, were they deep, 38 feet? Where were you at? Well, not where were you at location, but how were you fishing? Were you casting up shallow? Were you casting out deep? Were you dragging? Were you ripping? That's the stuff you want to know. All kinds of baits work, guys. Baits are there to catch us. I can go into my tackle store and pull anything off the shelf when you go out and catch something with it. I don't care what it is. That's, that's what you want to ask. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Good? Go eat some nachos for me. There's still some time. Question? No, okay. Oh, I appreciate that. You bet. You bet, you guys.